welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with special guest, Richard Webster, who's here to share with us his new book, Guardian Angels, How to Contact and Work with Angelic Protectors. Now, Richard Webster lives in New Zealand. He is the best-selling author of more than 100 books. He has appeared on several TV and radio shows in the U.S. and abroad, and travels lecturing and conducting workshops on a variety of metaphysical subjects. So let's welcome to the show, Richard Webster. Thank you very much, Marianne. It's great to be here. What an honor it is to have you here and to talk about this book. My goodness, you have such an extensive background in angels and working with angels. I mean, what inspired you to really start following them and writing about them? Well, I first became introduced to angels when I was about eight years old, and uh, I went to an Episcopalian school where we had to chapel once a week, but angels were not discussed. And I had uh, neighbors who uh, were Roman Catholics, and uh, they were talking about angels all the time, and they all had guardian angels. So one morning, I asked my padre, um, do we have guardian angels? And uh, he said, no, we're Episcopalians. We don't need them, but uh, Catholics do need them. And uh, the answer wasn't what I was expecting or what I wanted. So I accepted it at the, t- at the time, but it just remained in the back of my mind. And uh, it wasn't till I was in my middle 20s and I had a business reversal. And uh, my wife was pregnant. We had a home with a big mortgage, which we had to sell. And I was doing three jobs. And uh, while I was working at one of these rather menial jobs, I I had a voice which kept talking in my ear, and I was worried. I I thought uh, I was becoming, you know, a little bit bit deranged and uh, hearing things. And I suddenly realized it actually was my guardian angel. And my angel made me realize that I was the architect of my own misfortune, which I basically knew anyway, but I I accepted it. And... uh, encouraged me with what I really wanted to do with my life, which was to write. So that, that was my introduction to angels. It, it wasn't it wasn't something I sought out or even wanted, but it, it found me. Well, it sounds like you were on the path for angels regardless what was going on, I mean, especially from a young age. And when we talk about guardian angels for those who are not Roman Catholic, I mean, what is a guardian angel? A guardian angel is an angel who looks looks after you through this lifetime, but also in previous lifetimes and in future lifetimes as well. So it knows more about you than anyone else and is there to guide, counsel, help, advise in any, any way they can. The, their big problem is that they will not intervene unless you ask them for help. So uh, they, they often see their charges doing all sorts of silly and crazy things. And uh, they may give them little nudges, as I, as I got from my guardian angel, but uh, if they're ignored, there's nothing much they can do about it. But if, if people accept them and uh, communicate with them, and in, in my book I've got a number of techniques, of ways of doing that, then uh, they can work with the angel to imp- improve their life in every area of, of life. I find that so fascinating and so intriguing at the same time, because I think My goodness, it's like a relationship that we would build with any of our friends. It it is. Uh, Your your guardian angel is your best friend and knows more about you than any of your friends do. Probably knows more about you than you do because they've been with you in previous incarnations as well. So what are some of the things that guardian angels help us with? I know you said that we have to ask them for help and they can help change our lives, but like, what type of things do they help us with? They've helped. I've, I've had, uh, as as a writer, I've had some big ups and downs in the course of my life financially. And uh, my guardian angel has given me suggestions as to what I should do dur- during those times. Uh, they've helped me with the relationships with, with people. Uh, I've uh, I had problems with well, not problems, but uh, a, a club I belonged to. There was a man who I've known for about forty years, but I've never ever been able to communicate with him. It he, he was as if there was a brick wall between us. I was never able to get beyond saying hello and goodbye to him. And uh, my guardian angel helped um, 
knocked that wall down so that we can communicate now, and we've become quite good friends. So uh, it was quite quite extraordinary. I, I I just assumed the wall was there and that we were not meant to really speak to each speak to each other. He he, he was very very shy. He was exceptionally tall, very very shy, and he always stood at the, at the side of a room and he appeared to be looking down on everyone uh, with a look of disdain on his face. And I took that at face value, but I think he was just painfully shy. And uh, for about forty years, we could have been friends, but we we didn't. We hardly spoke to each other. But once uh, my, I asked my guardian angel to help and broke that barrier down, we've we've become quite good friends. So that's, that's just a, a minor example of uh, opportunities that we're probably all missing all the time in our own lives by not asking our guardian angel for help. Are there times when our guardian angels kind of step back and don't help us? No, no, I don't think so. Not, not, not if we, not if we ask for ask for help. We may not like the advice the guardian angel gives us. Uh, I've um, there've been a number of things I've thought I might do at different times, and my guardian angel has counselled against it. And uh, I've I've learnt the hard way to accept what my guardian angel says. In fact, in fact. Uh, if I don't really want to know the answer, I won't ask my guardian angel, but the information will come through to me in any way, whether I want it or not. But I, I have a, a particularly close relationship with my guardian angel because I walk for an hour or more every day. But being a writer, I'm just sitting down at my computer all the time. So uh, it's important that I get out and about and get a bit of exercise. And I always walk with my guardian angel. So after I've been walking for a short while, I just I just... Well, he's always there anyway, but I just recognize the presence of my angel and and start talking. And uh, I usually do it. I usually talk silently because like, it doesn't matter nowadays because most people are talking in their phones while they're walking anyway. So it doesn't matter. But uh, I learned that learned through experience that uh, it wasn't a good thing to be talking apparently to myself when I'm walking through city streets. But if I'm out in the countryside, I, I will often speak out loud. But uh, usually it's just uh, silent, a silent communication with my guardian angel. And we discuss everything, just what's going on in my life, what my hopes and dreams are, um, what's going on with my children and grandchildren, all, all, all those things. So how do we get to this place where we can meet our guardian angel if we've never really made that connection? Yes, the uh, easiest way to do that is uh, j- just just to start speaking to your guardian angel. And you probably won't get a reply in- instantly. You you may, but uh, of- often the guardian angel seems to be testing the person to see if it's just uh, something that they, some, a little fad that the person has and they'll lose interest. So it's to see if the person is serious or not. But uh, you will receive receive response. It's usually as a thought inside your head. And you can tell it's your guardian angel because it's not the sort of thought you would have had yourself n- normally. Uh, I hear my guardian angel as uh, a little voice outside my ear, not not actually inside my head. So uh, it feels as if my angel is is talking very very close to me, but uh, I can't see the see the I can't I don't see the see the angel. It's just it's just it's just just a voice and a sense of knowing that the angel is there is there with me all all, all the time. That's something it sounds like you develop over a period of time when establishing that relationship. Yes, yes, it took it took a long time. It, it took years, in fact, to get to the relationship I have with my angel now. I, I, I can talk to my angel at, at well, anyone can talk to their angel whenever that whenever they wish at, at any time. But uh, I look I look forward to my walks because it's a good chance to talk to my angel. So I do most of it then. I, I also talk to my angel when I'm in bed at night before falling asleep. I can talk to my angel there, then, if 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 I, if I want to. If well, even if I don't want to, I will say good night to my guardian angel. And uh, no, any, anyone anyone can do it. It's uh, just just a, a matter of trusting and knowing that your guardian angel is is there, talking and. Uh, being patient until you start establishing communication. Once you've done it once, you'll have no problems in doing it in the future. Now, when we initially start connecting with our guardian angel, do people do it in different ways, like meditations or dreams and things like that? 
Yes, yes, they do. And uh, there's there's no right way for everyone. Uh, I've, I've always been a keen meditator, and meditation is a very, very good way of getting in touch with your, with your guardian angel. Uh, in fact, uh, rather than meditation, a, a guided visualization is often a good way of doing it, which is similar to meditation. In meditation, you're diffusing your energies with a guided visit. With a guided visualization, you're focusing your energies on something. So if you re relax in the same way you do with a meditation, and then uh, concentrate on the fact that you're wanting to communicate with your guardian angel. I've even suggested to some people that they, when they're in that state, they picture the most beautiful scene they possibly can and can imagine. It might be something as a favorite place where they go, or it might be something they just create in their imagination. Doesn't it doesn't matter? They're sitting there or walking through it, and they just see their guardian angel walking towards them. And uh, the guardian angel gives them a hug, and then they start talking, and that that seems to be a very effective way for many people, as as long as, as long as they are, are able to relax and vi visualize the scene in their mind. No, there are other other ways of doing it as well. Uh, uh, quite a few people write, write a letter to their guardian angel, and uh, during the course of writing the letter, they will receive a response to it with with um, with, with th thoughts in their in their head as to from their guardian angel giving them advice and saying hello. So that's another good way of doing it. And some people, it, it happens completely spontaneously. They're, well, as, as it happened to me, I was working in, the, uh, in, a, in a warehouse and the voice just suddenly started talking to me. It can, it can come in that way as well. So how do we learn our guardian angel's name? <laughs> the guardian angels, well, actually, angels generally do not um, worry about names. Because uh, they know they know what their tasks and their jobs are, so um, names are a human construct. And uh, your guardian angel, if you ask your guardian angel for his or her name, the reply will be whatever you want to call me. But uh, they do they do have they do have names which uh, they will give you. And uh, the be the best way to do that is to wait until you've been communicating with your guardian angel for a short while, and then ask. Well, I would like to know your name, please, and uh, see see what see what comes. Uh, I, I do I, I do do angel evenings, and in the course of the the evenings, people often ask, "What is your guardian angel's name?" And uh, I can't do it there and then, but I can actually meditate meditate and uh, often get people's guardian angels' names for them, and I'm happy to do that. But uh, I, I prefer, I think it's better if people ask their angel themselves once they've established the right uh, connection. And uh, some some people say, do you mind if I call you and, and think of a name and give it to them? And the guardian angel will be perfectly happy with that because the, the angels don't really, really care about names. Your guardian angel knows who you are. You know your guardian angel is always there and uh, they don't really see the name, see, really see the need for names. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Richard Webster in regards to his new book, Guardian Angels. We'll be right back after these messages. Pandemonium. Fast forward 20 years. A U.S. president seizes control of all U.S. missiles, the power grid, the banking system, and every computer in America as he hides in an underground bunker. Pandemonium, a captivating sci-fi thriller where a hidden war, psychics, aliens, artificial intelligence, and transcendental love collide with the latest media technology. Pandemonium, live to all devices. Get your copy on paperback or digital. Free sample at getpsychic.org. Are you looking to entangle life's riddles? Discover the profound teachings of Dr. Shai Tabali, renowned philosopher, best-selling author, and your guide to self-empowerment. With methods that harmonize psychological and spiritual principles, Dr. Tabali's wisdom offers a pathway to holistic transformation. Take that first step today and join thousands globally and embrace the journey to higher consciousness. Visit shytabali.com. That's S-H-A-I-T-U-B-A-L-I.com now. Hello, Dr. Cutler here. 
do you experience bloating, heartburn, food craving, bowel irregularity, food sensitivities, weight issues? If you do not digest your food, you may be deficient in macronutrients, which your body needs for optimal health. Dr. Ellen Cutler.com teaches that this is an enzyme deficiency. I believe the most important supplement is a full spectrum digestive enzyme, Dr. Ellen's Way Digestive Enzymes. Hear more about it at DrEllenCutler.com. Are you chasing profitability yet losing fulfillment? Let me introduce you to your solution, the Relaunch Company. I'm Hillary DeCesar, an entrepreneurial performance coach, fearless leader of the Relaunch Company, here to help put the pedal to the metal and relaunch your business your way. Visit www.therelaunch.com. Take the free quiz to learn three steps towards waving goodbye to burnout and hello to success. The book Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, authored by Danny Carroll, is on sale at Amazon now. Licensed psychologist and psychotherapist Tessa Antia John Guerra commented, This is one of the most empowering books on a topic of cancer you will ever read. Award-winning author T.L. Needham commented, This recommended book can be understood by anyone seeking answers, hope, and alternatives to a terminal diagnosis. Buy it now on Amazon.com. Are you feeling disconnected from your life and your body as a woman? Do you feel numb emotionally and or sexually and just not sure how to feel really alive again or maybe for the first time? Are you struggling with body and self-acceptance, especially during menopause? If you'd like to reclaim your feminine and learn more about women and gynecology and how it can help empower your life, contact Gina Cloud at www.ginacloud.com. Are you a coffee lover who wants to make a difference? Look no further than Fire Department Coffee, a veteran-owned business that gives back to support first responders in need. Each batch of coffee is freshly roasted right here in the USA by a dedicated team of first responders and coffee experts. So when you enjoy a cup of Fire Department Coffee, you're not only drinking high-quality coffee, you're supporting members of your community. Start your day with a coffee that gives back. Visit FireDepartmentCoffee.com. That's Fire, D-E-P-T, Coffee.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, Richard Webster, who's here to share with us his new book, Guardian Angels, How to Contact and Work with Angelic Protectors. So before we left for break, we were talking about some of the aspects and characteristics of our guardian angels, such as do they have names? Do we give them names or do they even care? One of the things I like to touch on is about colors. Now, are there colors that are associated with our guardian angels? And if so, what does that mean? Yes, yes. And the, 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 the colors that are associated with you and your aura, we, we've all got um, a, a, a rainbow of colors uh, around us. And uh, your guardian angel will often reflect those colors back back to you. We're, we've got three three important colors in the in our aura. We, we actually have, have all, the, all the colors of the rainbow uh, in the, through the chakras. I don't want to get too complicated. I don't want to get too too sort of complicated to, about this, but we've got the three main colors surrounding us, and uh, it'll be one of those that your guardian angel will usually send back to you. And if people work out their colors new, using numerology, there there's um, one one of the main num- main numbers in numerology is a, is a heart's urge, the soul's desire, and that the color of that generally is the color that the guardian angel will reflect back to, to, the, to their charge. 
Well, that's fascinating. I love that, how that all comes together. You yes. know, one, of the, one of the things in your book I was so impressed with, you talk about the, in your book, you share about the guardian angel baggage release ritual. And uh-huh. I'd love for you to share a little bit about what that is and what that does for us. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, we, we all we all pick up baggage as we, as we go through life. So, so some people, it's amazing they can move this. Well, they're weighed down with so much baggage. I've got a number of techni- te- baggage release techniques, which I, I use with different people. But um, the, the one I like most is to um, uh, sit, sit down and, and relax. And then uh, when you feel to- totally relaxed, ask you, you got an angel to, to join you, to say you're going to do wanting to get rid of the baggage. And uh, to do that, you're going to morph into a, a, a big ball of wool, as if you're a great big, huge, huge ball of wool. And there are little strands going off in all sorts of different directions. And the, these are, the, this is all baggage. There's baggage at the, in, at the end of every, every strand. So uh, you ask your guardian angel to come with a big pair of scissors and clip all, all those strands of wool off until, so the ball is nice and round again. And uh, uh, that releases all, all of that, all of that baggage. The only baggage that the um, guy, your guardian angel cannot remove is baggage that uh, is uh, relate relates to fa- family, the, the, your your cl- your siblings, your your, cl- your close family, because that that, that is that's all karmic. You, it's it's here for you, you're associated with those people for a reason. So no matter what you want. To do, you can't get rid rid of of those because they're lessons that are learned in this lifetime. But everything else can be can be removed. So the ball is now round and smooth again. Then you walk back into yourself again, and you just carry on with your life. I always thank my guardian angel after doing anything of that of that sort, of course. And it's a good thing to do regularly because we're picking up baggage if, if, everywhere. If we might be driving on the freeway and uh, someone cuts us off, and we we get angry about it. So um, we, we create all sorts of little things all, all the time. So it's, it's a good way for personal well-being, mental, mental health, happiness, just, just to do a technique like, like the one I've just explained or other similar techniques, just, just to um, make your life as smooth and harmonious as possible. And it's quite a fun one to do. I, I, rather, I rather like morphing into a ball of wool <laughs> and... Uh, in my mind, seeing my guardian angel cutting it all, cutting it, cutting all the strands off. It's nice to have those visualizations that you can walk through. Um, yes. So that way, it it makes it. I think in my mind, it makes it so that I really see it as being done. Yes, that's right. You're you're actually watching it happen. Yes, at the at the same time. Yes. Yes, you, you actually feel a little bit lighter with every every time a, a strand is snipped. Now, as I, I know you go through mu- many, many, many examples of how we can heal ourselves, there, I was really surprised that we could actually send healing to others with our guardian angel. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. And uh, <clears throat> you, you can ask your guardian angel to communicate with the other person's guardian angel. And uh, a, number, a number of the popes uh, uh, have, 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 have done that on a regular basis. So, that they, whenever they were going to have a difficult meeting with someone, uh, the day before they would ask their guardian angel to go and speak to the other person's guardian angel, so that they could resolve all the problems before the actual meeting would take place. And uh, I, f- I find that works very well because it means that uh, all your meetings are, are harmonious because uh, well, the problems have been resolved before you even, even even met. So if you know you're going to have a difficult meeting with someone. Or you're expecting it to be awkward or difficult in some sort of way, you can you can resolve it, resolve it before it even happens. And I think it's a very very useful useful thing for your guardian angel to be able to do for you. It seems that when life becomes challenging and we're faced with many of the things that we're being faced with today, that a lot of people turn to prayer. How yes. important is prayer? I, th- I think prayer is, ex- is extremely important. Um, I, I, I believe that we're, we're all we're all, all one. We come from the un, 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 unformed into the form into the into form in this in our incarnations, and uh, when we we die, we go back to the source. So we're, we're all we're all part 
we're all, we're all part of God in a, in, a, in a sense if you look at it that way. So uh, we're, when we're when we're praying, we're we're actually praying for all all of all of humanity as well as as well as for us. Uh, I, I I don't believe in the 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 prayer where you you're ask, asking God to sing him as a great a great big person sitting on a on a cloud, and uh, you ask for all the things you want. You know, I want a little bit more more money for this. I want this this for this. I want this. Uh, but to, to to give thanks for all all the blessings that we all have in our lives. You know, the fact that we're alive in the first place is a, an amazing amazing blessing. It's a wonderful gift, and uh, for the good that we can do in in the life in the, the life we're leading, leading. So, I, I think prayer is is more a thanks and more a commun- communing with the source, which which we are which we are part of. So there is one story that really touched me in your book. Um, there's a lady, and I don't have her name in front of me, but she talks as a child, she would pray to God to heal the blindness of another young girl that she yeah. saw in the streets begging. And that story really touched me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, well, it's more satisfying to pray for someone else, I think, than to pray, pray for, for, you, for yourself. Uh, you, I, I, I I, I, I pray for confidence, for courage, for a positive attitude, all, all, of, all of these things. But I, I don't um, pray for anything else for myself that I'm, I'm aware of. I, I, I ask for bless, blessings on my, on my family and the people I love and care for, of course. But I, my prayer is, may, is mainly a thanks. And often my prayer is, is silent. It's a silent, just a silent, it, just being in the feeling in the presence of uh, of of the one of of of, of, the, of the source, and ju- just commu- communicate, uh, communing uh, that that way. I, I find is uh, incredibly healing, and uh, it's very similar to um, a meditation, but just just feeling that you are in the presence of of the of the, of the source. And of course, we're all part of it any, any, anyway. So we we are there all the time. But we see ourselves as individuals. We don't see ourselves as all as all as all one. You know, we're we're all we're all here for a purpose. Every, every single one of us, and uh, most of us don't know what our purpose in this lifetime is. So uh, prayer, prayer can give some clues to that. Yeah, your your guardian angel can also help you find, uh, let you know what your purpose in this lifetime is. And most people think they've got a great big huge purpose, but most people's purposes are more modest than that. It might might be to be the very best mother they can, to be able to um, be an extremely good teacher or a nurse. You you know that how, how the purpose in this lifetime. It we are growing all the all the way through. We're we're coming into we're in this incarnation to learn and to learn the lessons that we've we've agreed. To experience before we could, before we came into this lifetime, and uh, we've got to do the best we can with 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 those, and they may be huge or they might be very 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 modest, and it doesn't matter. It's all it's all important, whatever it is. So every, every life is imp- is important, and uh, we we can learn from from if, if everyone. I, I learned that when I was a, a, a young man. I had a friend who was a journalist, and uh, we'd had lunch. And uh, we were walking along a street, and there was a road sweeper, and he stopped and he spoke to the road sweeper for several minutes. And when when he came back, I said, "What what on earth were you doing?" And he said, "Everyone's got a story to tell." And then he told me about this this road this road sweeper, and uh, this road sweeper, funnily funnily enough, actually wrote about about three books eventually about his life as a road sweeper. And all the people he was able to help, he helped homeless people, he helped, he helped prostitutes, he helped all, all sorts of people because he met them all in his job as a, as a, as a road sweeper. And uh, so uh, that, that more or less told me when I, when I was very young that everyone has got uh, a, a, a story to tell and everyone's story is worth, is worth listening to because we can learn from all of them. This has got us away from angels, hasn't it? Hasn't it? <laughs> well, I, I think it all ties in. So, because I'm going to ask you uh, about limiting beliefs, and is yes. that something that our angels can help us with? And can you talk on that a little bit? Yes, yes, most most definitely. We we all have limiting beliefs. We we all hold ourselves back. We all have unlimited potential. We're, we're all capable of so so much more than we do. 
um, they say that our, our, we've got unlimited capacity in our brain. They, they say we could we can never run out, <laughs> never run out of um, capacity, capacity there. So we we can accomplish. We, we need to, we need to dream and have big dreams and uh, and uh, act on them. And our angel, of, our guardian angel, can help encourage and motivate us and give us good ideas as far as all of that is concerned. Uh, I, th- I think the big problem with all of us is that we hold ourselves back. You know, no matter how well we do in life, we're probably only doing a, achieving a small part of what we could could do if we really really applied ourselves. And uh, I'm, I'm 76 now, so I feel that time's running out, and there's so much more I still wanted to still wanted to do and accomplish. So. Um, uh, my guardian angel keeps me motivated, so uh, I'm not going. I'm not going to retire. I've no plans to ever ever retire. So um, because I've got every, everywhere I go, I make little notes. I've done it all, all my life, and if I get an idea for a book, I will on a on a napkin or whatever immediately try to write down ten interesting things about that topic, and then I'll put it in a drawer. And uh, I've got a I've got a drawer full of hundreds and hundreds of bits of paper all on books or topics I'd like to write an article or a book about. I'm not going to be able to live anywhere near long enough to <laughs> even do a tiny, small part of that. But it, it keeps it keeps me motivated, and it means I never, ever run out of things to do. I'm just busy, busy all, all, all the time. But uh, I like I like being that busy. And uh, my angel tells me when it's time to take a, take a break and take a rest. So um, I, I follow my angel's advice on that as well. Well, Richard, how many books have you written? Uh, there's 160 all altogether, but um, I've, I've done six, 60 with Llewellyn's, which is absolutely fantastic. Llewellyn uh, have been my publisher since 1994, I think. My first book with them came out. So they've been uh, absolutely wonderful for me. Uh, I, I used to be a magician at one time, and um, I, I write books for magicians as well. And I self-publish those, but the rest are published by different by different publishers. And um, I, I, I write under a few few names other than other than my own. And uh, but it's 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 one hundred and sixty, which it was never never planned. I never. I, I was told when I first started writing, you've either got to write a big blockbuster, then you never need write ever again, or else you need to be prolific to make a living out of it. So I've, I've had to be prolific. So um, to make it be able to make a living, because uh, writing is what I love doing. And uh, uh, if if I if I retired, I'd probably sit down and write a book. So there's no there's no point retiring. Well, I'm so glad that you are writing these books. My goodness, I felt like Guardian Angel really taught me a lot about Guardian Angels. And you know, I, I actually grew up Roman Catholic. So I know about angels, but there is so much more here that I didn't know. So I'm so glad that we had this discussion. My goodness. Well, Richard, where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about your work? Okay. I do uh, a weekly thing on Facebook called Contact Your Angels. If people go to Contact Your Angels, they'll they'll find me there. And... uh, um, I've got I've got a website, but I'm afraid it's about two years out of date. I'm so busy writing books that I'm not keeping it as up to date as I can. But that's um, www.psychic.co.nz where they can contact me there. But Facebook is probably the probably the easiest way to contact me nowadays because there's a link there to contact me. I think that's perfect. I want to check out that Facebook events that you have and be part of that. Richard, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you very much. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Marianne. Well, thank you, Richard. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Guardian Angels, How to Contact and Work with Angelic Protectors. Guardian Angels is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere books are sold. And if you don't see it on the shelf, ask for them to order and please support our indie bookstores. You can also purchase this book directly from the publisher, Llewellyn, at Llewellyn.com. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count.
In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work, and while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.